Hi everyone, it's me again, and I've got another video. This one is an updated video on my streaming setup. And if you saw the last video that I did on this, which was how I'm using my Macintosh with the Xbox and uh, trying to stream out using uh, Elgato's HD60S, uh, then you saw how I had hooked all that up. And I was not really going through OBS Studio for the Xbox stuff at the time. Well, that's changed now because I just got a, a 4K television. Um, the trick on this is I want to be able to see and play games in 4K and not have to strip it down to 1080p. Uh, so the problem that we've got here, and there's more than one, is the Elgato hardware, the capture device, can only accept a maximum of 1080p signal as an input, which means i got to dial down my Xbox One X to 1080p and turn off HDR, essentially two of the biggest features of the box, in order to get it to work with this piece of hardware. Um, there is right now no way that I'd be able to watch full resolution 4K HDR content while streaming without additional hardware. So had to figure that part out. Most hardware that's out there, these HDMI splitters, they downscale to the lowest common denominator, which is 1080p, or they strip the HDR on pass-through. So you'll get 4K, it just won't have the HDR signal. Again, I'm paying for it, I want to see it. <laughs> and so that's what we're doing here. Uh, alternatively, uh, how can I get, or could I get good performance uh, from a streaming solution like OneCast? And so we're going to look at both of those in this video here. Um, a potential solution. I did find a, a thing called Easy COO, Easy Coo, I guess, Easy Co. I don't know. It was a 4D HDMI splitter, and it's an HDR scaler. And so what I can do is I put one full signal at 4K HDR into the input, and I have two outputs. One will be a full 4K HDR output that goes to my television, and another one I could string that one to the Elgato thing. Now this thing's 65 bucks on Amazon. Uh, not exactly cheap, but uh, I've seen them up to 400 bucks. So, you know, it seemed to have all the specs that I wanted. Did it work? So I plugged it in, and we'll see what we got here. Here's my uh, elaborate <laughs> setup here. But if you looked at my last video, you'll see it's it's quite similar. Uh, I've got over here on the on the left the Xbox One X. I'm going out with 4K HDR into the splitter from the splitter going out into the 4K TV, and then the other one I've got. Um, uh, the other splitter is going 1080p HDMI out, so I'm actually downscaling it and putting it into the Elgato HD60S, as you can see there, and then going USB into a hub, and from that uh, also into the laptop, and then the rest is the sound setup and everything, which we're not going to really get into on this video. Uh, so simplifying it even further, this is what we've got. Um, you know, So out of the Xbox, into the, into the splitter, one output of the splitter, I've got the scaler turned on. There's a little switch in the front that'll turn that 1080p scaling on. So it's downscaling the 4K to 1080p. That goes into the Elgato. That goes into the USB hub, into the into the Mac. Now, when I'm running Game Capture HD software, this is kind of a pain in the ass. It's, it's, it, it, doesn't always, uh, it doesn't always get the signal correctly. So, and this is something I think is a bug on the... Um, on the Xbox side, uh, so if I've watched Netflix or YouTube or anything that's got HDCP, which is I think a, a high definition copy protection protocol, if it's got that baked in, you'll see this little error message and it says, oh, you can't get the signal, it's protected with HDCP. To make that go away, you've got to do a full, ref uh, full reset refresh on your Xbox, meaning you push the power button on the front for 10 seconds until it shuts down and you wait a few seconds and you push the power button again and it'll come back up and that should make that error go away. So it's getting the uh, the HDCP out of its system, so to speak. That should be flushed as soon as you quit Netflix and go into something else like a game that doesn't have that HDCP protection. It shouldn't have an issue, but it does for whatever reason. That's how you get around it. Second bit of the problem, though, is I was having difficulties getting the audio to always come through. So I would get the picture now, but it's like it has no sound. And sometimes if it did have sound, it would be, you know, really stuttery and whatnot. And so I was like, what the hell is this? The way to fix that is you can see there's a pull down menu right there where it says uh, capture HD 60 S. The other devices that I've got hooked up on the network were my iPad and my iPhone. So if I switch over to one of those other devices and then switch back, that tends to kind of reset the HDMI and um, kind of reset the, uh, the HD 60 S and about, 60% of the time I would get my audio signal back and I could see the audio moving on the the, the uh, VU meters at that point.
but still put some headphones on and listen to it because it could be that stuttery audio just to make sure that you don't get crap audio with it. All that being said, I was not that impressed with how this all hooked up and really did not work as well as I'd like it to out of the box. Um, however, for the sake of this video, I am testing this and I'm showing you what my results were. Your mileage may vary, but these are the results I got. So in this case, I'm going from the Xbox into the Elgato HD60S into Game Capture HD software and using that as a source for OBS. So I've got different methods that I'm using. Uh, one method, and I'll put the link to this video in the description in uh, the YouTube clip here, is um, you can make a local RTMP server. And before you get too you know, bent out of shape as to what all that means, way too technical for this video, but uh, there's, you can see what, you know, kind of what it's supposed to do in the link that I'm gonna put in the description. Basically what you do, is you run this local RTMP server and out of Game Capture HD, you crank up the settings you know, for the broadcast quality and everything like that and you send it, when you stream out of Game Capture HD, you're actually streaming to this local server. Then over in OBS, on the OBS side, is you set up a media source in OBS and you point to that RTMP server as the media source. And if all is working properly, then you should see beautiful quality video as a source in OBS and you can layer all your stuff on top of it. However, I'm running a, a 2013 Mac MacBook Pro. It's probably not got enough horsepower, so I was getting terrible frame rate. Basically, if I were to rate it on a five star scale, one out of five is terrible frame rate, unusable. But would have been cool if I could have used it, but I can't, it's, it's just not good. Now, if you've got PCs or even a dedicated PC that you could set the RTMP server up on that and let all its processing power go to just making that work, might be good. If you have an i5 or an i7 processor, or even an i9, you know, maybe it works for you. Didn't work for me. So then I went into to Game Capture and used it as a window source in OBS. And that's you set it up as a window source and then you crop, you know, use little crop things to take the UI of Game Capture out and just look at the 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 it boils down to just the, the game frame itself. Problem with that is Windows sources using game capture software, one out of five, again, terrible frame rate. So unusable. So then I use the display source. And what that does is it just says, well, look at the actual display that this application is sitting on and crop out just the game screen from that. Which, okay, the speed was much better. The frame rate was okay. But I'm, because I'm cropping out essentially a chunk of you know, lower resolution out of a corner of my screen here, you know, it, it was blurrier. It was, you know, lower resolution, not as good quality. Wasn't that impressed with it? You know, I'm thinking certainly with a hardware capture card, I should be able to get really good quality. And I just was not able to do it in OBS from that uh, HD60S. So then, all right, up to bat comes OneCast. Now, OneCast, as I mentioned in a pre previous video, is a piece of software that essentially acts like the feature in Windows 10 where you can stream your Xbox to your PC. Well, these guys did it for the Mac. So you can stream your Xbox to your Mac and it shows up and you can plug in a, a wire, wireless controller you know, or you know, pair up a wireless controller or Bluetooth one with your Mac and actually play on your Mac screen, which is almost a good idea. Um, what I think would be a great idea is to say, well, why can't I use that window then that I've got my little stream coming in as a source in OBS, which is exactly what this video is trying to do. Because I could give two shits about playing my Xbox on my Mac. I own my TV, so no one's kicking me off of that. But I want to use it as a reliable source for streaming Twitch and Mixer and, uh, and YouTube. You know, that's what I want to do, use it for. So... This is the basic setup. Got my audio coming in from the Heil, Heil uh, PR40 mic here. Um, and one cast in OBS running on my Mac. So how did that fare? Well, the one, the one method I tried first was Wi-Fi. So no cabling, just did it over the same Wi-Fi network. So I cranked it up to highest quality on, on one cast, used it as a window source in OBS. And while it looked good, it, the picture stuttered a lot. It was having difficulty bringing, you know, payload over my network there. Um, and, uh, you know, the sound was stuttering and the picture was stuttering. Um, at high quality, it was a bit smoother, so three out of five, but it still had some sync issues. So the audio would kind of lag back a little bit and things like that. And it kind of got worse over time. I'm going to have to experiment with that a little bit and see, is that something that's going to be persistent? Uh, and then I tried it at medium quality 
and also a three point a three out of five. It was smoother still, but the resolution was significantly lower. Um, so as far as you, know, you lose picture quality, you gain smoothness. And you're looking for kind of this this middle ground here. Uh, so the high quality of our Wi-Fi would be good if I didn't have the sync problems. And so I think that might be unwatchable for longer streams. So that said, so also on some of the, the forums and the video reviews that they said, well, OneCast, if you use it over a, a, an Ethernet network, and this is not an Ethernet network, but I'm using Ethernet in the network, uh, the quality goes up. I don't have the cable modem and the router in the same room as my Xbox. So what I'm using is Powerline. And if you see the two power line things there, um, I got them in a set of two, basically, and you know, they have two outputs on each for Ethernet. But it works really well over regular electrical, you know, the regular electrical power lines in your house, and hence the name power line. Um, so I'm going, if you go from the far right, the Internet goes into my cable modem, which goes into my Apple uh, Airport, was it Airport Extreme router. And from that, Ethernet into the power line, which is plugged into the wall. And in my office here... I got the other power line plugged into the wall and I've got ethernet going into my Mac and ethernet going into the back of the Xbox. And the speed is, you know, very comparable, comparable, um, but there's less competition on this part of the network. And also because it's hardwired, it seems like the signal stays a bit more consistent. Um, now I'm not going to be able to say that I've you know, professionally diagnosed that, but uh, it seems that it's more consistent. And I'll show you what I mean by the testing here. So here we go again from Xbox to OneCast to OBS, only this time Powerline with the highest quality. Um, got a three out of five. Had some stutter, but it was pretty, pretty darn good. Um, going to high quality and used OneCast again as a window source in OBS, four out of five. We're getting there. It's quite smooth, but it wasn't a hundred percent, you know, sharp picture. I mean, I, I'm, I'm picky. You know, I'm looking at it in 4K, and I'd really like to see some, some crispness, you know, on the edges and stuff like this. And, you know, I'll, I'll sacrifice some crispness for smoothness, but it needs to be watchable. You know, particularly for people watching my streams, I want to make that experience as good as possible for them. And then finally, I dialed it down to medium quality. Um, Looking at something like PUBG, where there was a lot of text on the screen when they'd flip to the map mode and you'd see the names of the cities and stuff like that, the text was a bit blurrier. And in my opinion, too blurry to be comfortable for someone to watch your stream because if they're watching you know, any sort of on-screen user interface or whatever that's got text on it, it's going to be difficult for your viewers to read that. And you don't want to be reading it to them. So you know, your mileage may vary on that. But here's where I wound up. And so this is what I'm going to start doing for some of my streams coming up is I'll be using the power line, high quality setting, and um, you know I'm getting a four out of five in, in terms of my assessment of, of its quality there. So I think that's pretty good. Um, simplified again, here it is. I've got my uh, Logitech for the, the webcam video. I've got my Heil for the, the audio, um, listening uh, to Stealth 500s when I'm playing the games. The Xbox One X is then streaming out to OneCast, which also goes into OBS Studio as a source composites it all using OBS, and then it spits out using Restream.io, going to YouTube, to Twitch, and to Mixer. And there you go. That's the, that's the new simplified setup, and it's working for me now. So I, that's it. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments below, and I'd be happy to, to help you out. Uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see what the result of some of these live streams are, like what's the quality actually look like, I'll be streaming using that setup uh, starting tonight. Uh, so you can follow me at any of these things here. I'll be streaming to YouTube, to Twitch, and to Mixer. And there's my information right there. You can check me out and uh, let me know what you think. If you like, this, you like those channels, hit the follow button as well. All right. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.